what's going on guys welcome back to the 2d tower defense series in this one we are going to add in an enemy which will follow our paths and through this little plot here um which will take us to the end where obviously we'll destroy our enemy and the player would normally take damage so let's start this straight out by creating a enemy we're going to create a 2d sprite which is going to be a circle enemies can be circles i feel like that's a valid point let's bring this up here just so we can see it out here um and i'm going to give this a specific color let's let's make it a red color like this something quite bright so you can see it and there you go now you can use actual sprites for this you don't have to use these enemies i'm also going to make this about 0 0.8 so it's not absolutely massive compared to everything and there you go let's just make this uh seven or even six uh or 0.5 wherever this starting point is and that's where we're actually going to be now we're going to add a circle collider 2d to this enemy um which is going to be how we shoot the enemy in the future but for now it's not necessarily needed i just wanted to add it there ready later on let's rename this to enemy and now what we want to do is we want to create two things we need a somewhere a static list of all the plots and the starting point to our game so to do that we can create either a object on one of these or you can do what i like to do and create a level manager now the level manager will hold multiple scripts but this will be responsible for this level's data such as the uh plots the buildings that are placed in it and the elements inside of it so let's just add a component and let's create something useful let's call this the let's just call this whole script the level manager and then we can add to it if we need or split script scripts up later on let's just start off by calling this the level manager so i'm going to double click this to open it up in Visual Studio, our Visual Studio code, should I say, and let's just close that sidebar. And in here, what we want to do is we want to make this static. This means that we can call this from anywhere we want. Um, so I'm going to create a public static level manager and we're going to call this main now this is what we're going to call we'll be able to then call level manager dot main which will get us this instance here so to actually set the main as this element we're currently talking about what we want to do is in the awake function we just want to say main is equal to this now what we we want in here is a public we want a public transform array which we're going to be calling our path and the path is going to be the enemy path which we can take we also want a public transform which is going to be our start point as this is something we'll be using as well so back inside of unity let the scripts compile and then once that's compiled we can go onto our level manager and see this here so the first thing we want to do is in our path is get our starting point and then we want to select all our points now you can see here it's currently taken away the element on the right here it's actually selecting all these so to fix that select level manager and actually click this lock icon here this will stop it from switching areas or switching to a different thing now when we select all these we can drag them into our path and add them in now make sure they're in order so level one is this one so if you tap this you'll see it tells you which one is what and just make sure these are the points in order because obviously he's going to be going from the top to the bottom of this list so now that's set we can actually go to our enemy here and i'm just going to quickly create a prefab out of our enemy just to make sure we can reuse him later on because we're going to be spawning him in the next video but in this one we're just going to get him set and following the path now to follow the path we want an enemy movement script so we'll call this enemy movement and create a new create an add and once this has compiled we can then open this up in visual studio code and get started on some code now some for the first thing we want to do is probably create a serialized private flow which is going to be our move speed and we'll set this thing to like two to start with um, i'm just going to create a header which is called attributes um, and this will be all our attributes for our enemy we also want a header which i'm actually going to put at the top of this 
and this header will be our references. Now, the only reference we need right now is another serialized private element, which is going to be a rigid body 2D RB. Now, this is going to be set in the inspector, but this will allow us to actually move our enemy around. Now, we want to create a couple of private elements here, and the first private one is going to be our a transform which is going to be equal to our target. So this is going to be the uh, point we want to move to. Now, we are going to be able to swap points by telling whereabouts we are in the world. So now after this, we want to go into update and also start. And in start, we want to set our target equal. We want to set our target equal to level manager dot main dot. And then we want to get the path option zero we also want to create a private int and we want to keep target off our place on the path we can call this our path index which we can set to zero by default and then we can actually pass this in here so now in update we want to do a couple of checks now the first one is going to be if our target dot well actually we want to say factor two dot distance and we want to check our target dot position is cl how close it is to our current transform position and to check this we just want to say if this is actually less than or equal to let's say something small like 0 0.1 we will basically want to go path index plus plus now this is going to increase our um, position in our element and it's going to basically set us a new target we then want to say if path index is greater than or equal to our level manager dot main dot path dot length and we actually want to change this just to equal to then that means we are going to destroy our game object. This means we've made it to the end of the path, and we also just want to return here as well to make sure it does not run any more code after this. So what we're doing is we're checking the distance, and once we get to the element, we're going to increase the path, which is going to change the target we're looking for. So now below this, we want to go into fixed update. And inside a fixed update, we're actually going to move our rigid body. The first thing we want to do is get a new vector 2 called direction, which is going to be the direction our enemy needs to move in to get to its target. Now, to figure this out, what we want to do is get the, the target position. And we want to minus it from our current position. Um, and we're going to wrap this inside of parentheses and say dot normalize to make sure this direction only goes between zero and one so it will never be something anything greater than that this will give us the direction our player needs to move in or have velocity in to actually reach the next target once we've got that set up we just need to go in here and say rb dot velocity is equal to direction times by our move speed this means our enemy our player will move along to the next element we also also, inside of our distance check, want to make sure once we've updated this path, we actually want to update our target as well, just to make sure we are going towards the next target. But we should probably do this below the if statement or do else because this will stop it from setting the target to a null value that does not currently exist in our path. If we do this before and we get to the end, it will throw an error saying it's out of bounds. So this should, in theory, work. So let's go back to Unity and let's just test to make sure everything is working. Now we need to actually uncheck this lock marker so we can actually see our enemy. And on here, we need to actually apply our enemy movement. It looks like I accidentally added our enemy movement to our level manager. Uh, because I had it selected but let's just move it over here and now we also need a rigid body 2d which we will put probably higher up on this which we'll need to actually apply to our prefab so let's just apply this open the prefab 
and then move this further up just because it will be neater. Then we want to make sure our rigid body is set to kinematic. This means it will only move when it's made to in the script and it won't move uh, by external forces like being hit or hitting something else. Now inside of our enemy movement we can drag our rigid body 2D into the rigid body 2B reference slot. Um, and that will allow it to uh, actually have the reference and work. So let's go back and now hopefully when we hit play this enemy should start moving from here to the first point. And there you go, you see he hits the first point, he goes to the second, third and you can see he's currently following all the points and making his way through our level. Now hopefully he should make it all the way to the end and then just disappear. And here we go to the final corner and boom, there you go. You see he disappears and we get no errors. So our enemy has made it all the way to the end and hit this. Now, normally once we get to the end, we'll probably call something that takes our life away. So we could either had a health script on our level manager that says once we lose 10 points, we lose. Uh, but we will save that for the game over um, episode. Now that's going to be it for this video. In the next one, we're actually going to set this up as a spawner. So it will spawn waves of enemies um, which will come against us and slowly get faster and harder to defeat. But for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next episode. Peace out.